Grace, mercy, peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You got to get your head right, said my coach from college. And I was on the soccer team, and we were away at a game, and it was halftime, and we were down 4 0, and we were playing terribly. He yelled at us over and over again, you got to get your head right. you got to get your head right. What is wrong with you guys? I've never seen my coach, one of my professors, and a pastor so angry. <laughs> His face would get really red when he got angry, too. And we're all there just with our heads down thinking, Coach, we're down 4-0. Leave us alone. Like, we realize we're not doing good at this point. And, and you're, you're reminding us of who we should be and, and how we should be playing is not making me feel much better. But as down as we felt, as, as broken as we were, he was right. And we knew that. We were playing one of the best teams in the conference. So it was no surprise that we were going to lose. And we had played a game the day before, so we were tired. But he was right that we were playing terribly. And we were much better than how we were playing. We had given up before we even started. And so we listened to our coach's words as he yelled to us again and again, get your head right, get your head right. And we played the rest of that half, and no, we didn't win. We still lost, but we lost 5-0. So we definitely improved our game that second half. But the point was, we finished that game, and we were so thankful to our coach because we he reminded us of who we were and the type of mentality that we had grown used to having but had forgotten about in that moment of weakness. And we did much better the rest of the season because we remembered his words, get your head right. The words from 1 Peter for today, from our second lesson, are a lot like what that coach said to us as a soccer team, but this is much more important because it applies to Christians throughout time, to the Christians he was first writing to way back then in 1st century A.D., and to us today. Because essentially what first what Peter is saying to us, the Apostle Peter, who struggled himself many times to remember who he was and why he was, the mentality that the Savior had given him, he says to us, get your head right. Remember who you are. Have the same mentality as your Savior. Our key thought today is arm yourself with the Savior's mentality. And why is it necessary for Peter to remind Christians long gone and us today to essentially hit us upside the head and tell us again and again, get your head right? Why do we need that? The Christians that Peter was originally talking to had been Gentiles their whole life, not just by the nation that they belonged to. See, Gentiles were all nations that were not Jews. So they were a nation that didn't know about the Old Testament. They didn't know about the God who brought the people out of Egypt, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They knew nothing about that God. They were Gentiles by skin and by heart, which means that they knew nothing about the true God. They only knew what their culture had taught them. And if you've studied anything about Greek mythology, it's not very impressive. Let's just say that. It's not a very evolved vision of who God might be. Essentially, you have a bunch of guys like Zeus and Hera who are constantly fighting, just like humans, whether out of anger or jealousy, and through their anger and their fighting, somehow create and cause all the turmoil that you see around you. So between the storms and the tornadoes and the floods and just the overall wickedness of people that's caused by the, the gods fighting like humans, 
over jealousy and anger and pride and all of these things. That was their vision of what God looked like. And so these first Christians that Peter was writing to, that's where they came from. So their life, taught by their gods, was this. That this list that Peter tells us, this unbridled immorality, lusts, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and discussing idolatry, that was the goal of life. That's what the gods did. And so that's the point of life for you. So if you want to find meaning and happiness and joy in this life, do as the gods do. Get drunk all the time. It's fun. It's exciting. You forget about your responsibilities, right? It's like this elixir from the gods that, that allows you to escape from this world's pain. That's the answer. Or let your lusts run wild, because why not? Right? The gods do it. They teach you to do whatever you feel like. Push the boundaries. Do all of this, because you're going to find happiness, both physical and emotionally. Just do whatever your lusts tell you to do. Have this unbridled idolatry. Reach after all of the material things around you, because that's what the gods do, and they are happy, right? On Mount Olympus, in that great, wonderful place, maybe you too, through your feats of unbridled immorality, of reaching and getting more drunk than anyone else, that you may eventually join those gods in their eternal party on Mount Olympus. This is where those Christians came from that Peter had come to and taught about Jesus. Now the funny thing happened was when he came to teach them about Jesus, the drunkenness and the orgies and the drinking parties and the unbridled immorality, all of that kind of seemed pointless, meaningless. Because one truth was abundantly clear to these Gentiles that they could get as drunk as they wanted, they could chase after their lusts, they could full headlong push the boundaries of what is right in society's eyes, but no matter how much they did that, their life only got worse. Maybe for a split second they felt happy and, and satisfied, but they'd wake up the next morning with a bigger headache and a bigger sense of guilt and a bigger emptiness than the night before. And so when Peter came with this message about Jesus, they were blown away by the fulfillment that that message brought to their lives. Just think about it. How different Jesus is from the gods of desire, of humanity, of us being our own gods, how different Jesus looks from all of that. Because here is a man who is, yes, true man, but he is God, who preaches that desire, lusts, and all of these things, by seeking that sinful side, by trying to appease those things, is only going to hurt your life more. And you're going to feel worse in the morning. That's, that's what he said. And their experience told them, you know what? He's right. And instead, Jesus said, come to me, as we said last week, all you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. How? Because I am God who was made man, but I am so much more than what man is. I do not delight in all of this sinful behavior, but instead I am coming to free you from it. I am coming to free you from your guilt, your pain, and all of these things that you can't escape on your own. I have come to take that on myself to die on a cross so that you can trust in me for forgiveness, for life eternal. So not just this life being the answer, but there being an eternity where there is no pain, no sorrow. And I am very much the answer to the desires that you have in every way. 
Because you desire for meaning, you desire for happiness, you desire for pleasure, and I am the fulfillment of all of those things. You desire for these things, you never are satisfied because what you are really desiring is God. A being that can give you complete happiness in himself by taking away the sin that is around you, not by appeasing your sinful desires in the wrong way, but by showing you exactly how to fulfill them in the right way. And when you fail, to forgive you and give you new life and hope for eternity. So when Peter came preaching who Jesus was, that he was a God of love, a God not of fulfilling these desires, but running away from them. And even when you failed and felt the guilt and the, the sadness and the emptiness in the morning, promised that he would fulfill that with hope of eternal life. These Gentiles loved that message. And they trusted in Peter, they trusted in Jesus, and they turned away from their old way of life. But sadly, as human beings, it's very easy to fall back into those old habits. And so Peter wrote them and said, don't forget the difference between Jesus and the gods that you used to worship. Don't forget the difference that Jesus has made in your life, that he has told you about an eternal life that is coming, that this world is going to end, and yes, all men will be judged, and yet, with the hope of Jesus, you escape all of that. You are entering in this new kingdom, this new life. And so he reminds them, you have already spent enough time in the past doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in this unbridled immorality, this lust, this drunkenness, these orgies, these drinking parties, and this disgusting idolatry. But for this reason, now, change. Move away from this river of filth and remember, have the same mindset as Christ who suffered in the flesh. And in this way, you will be done with that sin. Peter is reminding them, don't go back to that old way of life. Don't remember the past as these great glory days where you could drink as much as you wanted, do whatever you wanted, and it was so much fun. He says, instead, remember it for what it was. You might have had a couple crazy fun nights with your buddies, but remember the morning after. Remember the consequences of your sin. Remember how it made your life so much harder and worse. And then remember what your Savior has done for you. Remember who Jesus is and the hope that He gives you of eternity with Him forever. We need that same reminder, Christians, today. Now, I know many of you probably came from a Christian background. You were raised in a Christian household. Some of you, no, maybe not. But regardless of your background, I think all of us are tempted to sometimes relive our glory days. Our fond memories of the past of whether it is this drunkenness or our lusts before we were married maybe and you think about all of the potential things that you could have done, the parties that you went to and the thoughts that you had, the drinking parties, the disgusting idolatry, the other things that we put so much higher than God in our lives are as priorities. And maybe that's today for you, still, struggling with all of these things. We all struggle with disgusting versions of immorality and idolatry. And we are tempted to think that maybe those things are better than Jesus. And the hope that he gives. Maybe we should just live however we feel like. Because it makes us happy. And Peter gives us a firm reminder that in those things, we will not find happiness, joy, 
or satisfaction. We may remember the funny things that we did or some good, hilarious memories with friends. And that's not always a bad thing. But don't forget about the pain and the consequences that those sins cause. That they make our life complicated. That you may still be suffering with some of those complications, those consequences. That unbridled sin is not all it's cracked up to be, but it pulls us away, especially from our God, and leaves us feeling depressed and hopeless. Peter reminds us of this. Why? So that we remember who we are. We're 4 0 down at halftime. We're losing the game. Your coach, the apostle here, and God, through these words, is saying to us, Guys, wake up. I know this life is hard. That you're in a harvest field. And you're surrounded by weeds. And it feels like you're being choked out of life all the time. And you have so many things hurting you and creating this life to be really hard. And sometimes it seems like those, those pleasures of the past or yesterday, are the answer, are the solution, the escape that you need. But Peter says, no. Remember who you are and why. Remember the Savior's mentality. By appeasing those desires, you will only make it worse because what you want is God. What you want is Jesus. What you want is mercy and unlimited love that pours out to you from the cross where Jesus died for your sins. He redeemed you from this life. He promised you the hope of eternal life that when God comes to judge the living and the dead, you will be with him forever. Our Old Testament lesson described us as shining like the sun. That all the burdens and all the fear and all of the sadness that you experience now will be gone, not because of sin, but because of Christ. Because of Him and all He has done for you. So arm yourselves with what Christ has done for you. Think about what He has given you. A hope for eternal life. That this world will never fully give you what you desire. But Christ will. And he teaches you how to live in this life so that you may endure in the hope of eternal life that Christ has given you, that you may stand firm in this world and shine as a light so that, yes, you may be mocked by the people you used to run around with. You may be mocked by the culture around you. Your peers and friends may call you weird, that you are running in a different direction. But stand proud, armed with Christ, knowing that you have a much better hope than finding happiness in drunkenness, in orgies, in drinking parties, in immorality. But your hope is in the King of heaven and earth. Your hope is in the one who has risen from the dead. Your hope is from the one true God who came to this earth to free you from your pain, your sadness, your guilt, and your sorrow. He has given you hope everlasting. So go play the game. Get your, get your head right. Remember who your Savior is. It may look like you are losing the battle. You may feel that you are surrounded. You may feel that this life is overwhelming. But remember your Savior who has rescued you. Remember that he has already won the victory. See, in this game of life, God has already won. And so when he speaks to you at halftime right now, in the middle of your life, he says, get your head right, because he wants you to remember him and the victory he has already won for you. So have hope, Christians. Judgment is nearly here, but you are safe and redeemed and you have a job to do 
of sharing the light of Jesus Christ until that final day. So go with the hope and the confidence that you can only have in Christ. Arm yourselves with his mentality. Amen.